some women dressed up as uh, <laughs> uh, characters from The Handmaid's Tale, and they chose to protest in front of Amy Coney Barrett's house. Now, I believe in this video that they're being heckled by anti-vaxxers, but um, I'm not entirely sure. Let's let's watch. As performance art, what is it supposed to mean or say? As performance art, what is it supposed to mean or say? I mean, take a guess, buddy. Is it not self-evident what they're trying to say? What message they're trying to convey here? Do you really need it spelled out for you? Jesus Christ, how dense are you? So in response, uh, I, I'm assuming some lady is yelling, no more vaccines, my body, my choice there. It's so gross that anti-vaxxers have tried to corrupt the my body, my choice slogan from pro-choice activists. Like whoever does that is genuinely like sick in the head and doesn't understand the difference between bodily autonomy and public health. But, um, you know, so that happened with Amy Coney Barrett. But also uh, protesters marched to Alito's house as well. Now, you've seen these protests. We looked at the Amy Coney Barrett protest, the Alito protest, but, you know, it also happened at uh, Robert's house and Brett Kavanaugh's house. And as you can see, these are completely peaceful. They're not violent at all. They're holding vigils. And uh, still, the right has absolutely melted down. Marsha Blackburn has some really strong thoughts on what should happen with these protesters. They should haul all of these people down to the police headquarters. They should book them for violating a federal statute. What they're trying to do is change the outcome of a Supreme Court decision. What do you expect them to do, Marsha? This is an unelected body. We don't elect a Supreme Court. We can barely choose who chooses to be on the Supreme Court. So what exactly do you want them to do? Like, isn't this the party that has tried to take up the mantle of free speech? Why do you hate free speech, Marsha Blackburn? You have this image on the screen of them peacefully marching, but yet because she's a fucking snowflake, well, she, she wants them to go to jail. I don't like it. Shut the fuck up! Now this Fox News host was trying to own Democrats on this issue, in particular Rashida Tlaib, Ilhan Omar, and um, Elizabeth Warren. But they ended up low-key making her look foolish. So uh, let's watch, because she's going to try to make it seem as if uh, Democrats are unreasonable for not condemning these peaceful protests. And of course, this is on Tucker Carlson's show. Um, but watch how they respond. The way that they respond is absolutely perfect. Well, we've been talking to lawmakers on Capitol Hill all day, trying to ask the question, if they support people protesting outside Supreme Court justices' homes, interrupting church, or if they think these... Yes to both. If you're going to impose your minoritarian views on all of us, then yeah. Don't be surprised when people take issue with that. I don't care if you're at home. I don't give a shit if you're in church. Fuck your church. We should be able to make our voices heard. And since we can't vote these Supreme Court justices out of office, this is the way that we do it, right? This is the First Amendment. This is a right that the Supreme Court, ironically, has uh, affirmed. Protesters should be prosecuted for breaking federal laws in place that ban that behavior. Bottom line, you don't condemn it. You think that these protesters should continue to be outside Supreme Court justices' homes and interrupt church. I get interrupted and protested all the time. I welcome it in many ways. It's See, and do you hear her complaining about this? All the time. And Chuck Schumer, to his credit, had a similar response. He's like, I have protests like three to four times per week at my house. He doesn't complain. But for Republicans, they never pass up an opportunity to politicize something. Notice how they focused on the leak itself, and now they're focusing on the protests. They really don't want to talk about abortion. They don't want to talk about the substance because they know it's a losing issue for them. So they keep deflecting. Oh my God, we're so mad at the leaker. You should be mad at these Democrats who say it's okay to protest in front of Supreme Court justices' homes. Uh, but they don't want to talk about abortion itself. They don't want to make the case. And it's because they know this is a losing issue. 
as long as it's not, you know, uh, violent rhetoric, uh, talking about, you know, physical harm and all those kind of things, I think it's just really important to understand that that happens. Uh, we're in public service. This Supreme Court exactly. said back then, protesters should be able to get right in people's faces. Now, they are erecting barriers to try to keep protesters as far away from themselves as possible. I think that's fundamentally wrong. Did you think... Okay, I have this. I have to say it. Based Elizabeth Warren, she gets credit where it's due. Perfect answer. The Supreme Court said that you can harass women as they go to abortion clinics. No 35 foot buffer zone, and we'll talk about that in a second. But yet, all of a sudden, we're have, we're supposed to be worried about the Supreme Court because people are protesting in front of their house. That's called democracy, motherfucker. A First Amendment protection that you upheld. The same court upheld. That these protesters should be prosecuted for breaking federal law. What is the federal law? I'm sorry. It's U.S. Code 1507. It prevents picketing or parading in or near a building, housing a court of the United States, or in or near a building or residence occupied or used by such judge. Do you think they should be prosecuted? Oh, fuck off. Prosecuted <laughs> for breaking federal law. The Supreme Court itself um, has heard this argument, and they have themselves said it is protected by the First Amendment. So, Tucker, even... So, <laughs> that was a perfect answer, by the way. So, there this person is trying to make an anti-free speech argument on the same exact show where Tucker Carlson purports to care about freedom of speech. And it's blowing up in her face. Like, are any Republicans going to stand up and say, you know what, since I'm a free speech absolutist, I support people's right to protest at the homes of Supreme Court justices. None of them are saying that. They're saying the opposite right now. But let's let's hear her out. Laws in place, as you heard there, preventing protesters from going to judges' doorsteps, trying to influence their decision from interrupting church services. A lot of these Democrats that we talked to are not budging and not backing away from supporting this law-breaking behavior. Tucker? Law-breaking behavior. Shut, Shut the, the fuck up. up. Now, we, we've got to look at this because I, I just love that that there's pro clutching going on when the supreme court uh they uh they okayed this kind of behavior right supreme court strikes down abortion clinic buffer zone law this is from 2014 i'm sure a lot of you still remember this the supreme court has struck down a massachusetts law mandating a 35 foot buffer zone around clinics that provide abortion services in other words literally they're saying it's okay for you to get up in women's faces as they uh as they go to get abortions and there's a cnn video maybe we'll t we'll check it out where um, they actually show this. They show people stopping a woman's car as she's driving into an abortion clinic, and she's horrified because obviously that is intimidation, but the Supreme Court said that it's okay. And now we're all screeching in unison about them peacefully protesting in front of the Supreme Court justices' ho homes. Like, get the fuck out of here. Backers of the legislation have said the law treats groups equally, requiring both supporters and opponents of abortion rights to maintain their distance from the clinics. But in a unanimous ruling Thursday, the justices found that the buffer zone infringes on the First Amendment rights of protesters. So it seems like this court has a pretty, pretty... Um, strong emphasis on protecting free speech rights does it not so you could assume that it would apply to uh, protesting at their homes as well i don't think they'd rule that way though if given the opportunity today this is what the supreme court said they said you can get very very close to protest that's your first amendment right but now that it's happening to them well in comes congress to save them senators quickly passed a bill to expand security for families of supreme court justices all it took was uh, protesters, 100 protesters marching to Kavanaugh's home and then uh, Chief Justice Roberts' home. And then the next day, or maybe the day after, the Senate passed this by unanimous consent, not one objection. So members of the U.S. Senate passed the bipartisan bill Monday that would expand security protection to the immediate family members of Supreme Court justices following recent protests at some justices' homes. The Supreme Court Police Parity Act was approved by unanimous consent, meaning no senators objected to its quick passage. The legislation must also be passed by the House before going to President Joe Biden's desk for his signature. Now, uh, can you guess what the House has said about this? We're going to get it done very quickly. Don't you worry. This country will put kindergartners into debt for eating lunch and drill teens on how to fight off school shooters. But if a senator sees sidewalk chalk or a judge hears protesters, the full force of the state rushes to coddle and protect them. Is that not ridiculous? Is that not ridiculous? Now, you know, um, let me pull up the video. Let me see if I can find it here because I want to show you all what I'm talking about. 
with how ruthless these anti-choice protesters are. This is a common occurrence in this country. So this is a woman who's going to get an abortion, and this is an anti-choice person who's actually to her car. She's trying to turn in, and they stop her before she can turn in. Take a look. These two men are anti-abortion protesters trying to convince the frightened woman behind the wheel not to drive into this women's medical clinic parking lot where she has an appointment for an abortion. The woman who walked up to the car is the co-director of the clinic, assuring the patient who speaks little English she is safe with her and that they will protect her while she's here. This type of confrontation at the Knoxville Center for Reproductive Health in Tennessee is very common, but it's happening at a very unusual moment in time with the knowledge that legal abortion may be ending very soon in this state. I can't even find words how disturbing it is. Corinne Ravetti is a nurse practitioner and one of the other co-directors of this clinic, which provides all types of gynecological health care. What kind of society is that, that we force people to, uh, to motherhood when they're not prepared or ready to do that or know that they... Yeah, that's a great point from Gamergy. Fox News docked an abortion doctor and demonized him on air every week. He was murdered. Yeah. Remember that? Uh, Bill O'Reilly is the one who I think was saying it. Tiller, Tiller, the baby killer. I mean, abortion clinics are under constant threat, but yet the Senate protects Supreme Court justices, gives them their own security for them and their families. Meanwhile, these abortion clinics, like they have to constantly watch their backs. Dr. Aaron Campbell is one of the physicians who performs abortions here. He's the medical director. I think people... This guy is in way, way, way more danger than all of the Supreme Court justices combined because he's a physician that performs abortions. He does other things than just abortions, right? But because he also does abortions as part of his health care, he's in way more danger than the Supreme Court justices. ...pursue unsafe, illegal abortions, and I think people will get sick and die, and I think that blood and their death will be on the hands of these lawmakers that are passing these laws. Dr. Campbell's late father was also the medical director here for many years. I think he would be devastated. There are very few places that provide abortions in Tennessee. There was another clinic just a few miles away from here. On New Year's Eve, our local Planned Parenthood affiliate uh, was burned down, ruled to be an arson. And it hasn't reopened? It hasn't reopened. It's not been rebuilt. Doing this type of work has long been intimidating and often frightening for the medical professionals. Many of the patients who come here for routine checkups do it partly out of support and loyalty for the clinic, Lisa being one of them. And she shares the employees' emotions about what the Supreme Court seems poised to do. It makes me angry. For now, the anti-abortion protesters say they will continue to be here. We're not here to intimidate people who are here, because but you do, and you know that. Well, if, if the child was outside the womb, we wouldn't be acting like this. And the clinic employees say they will continue to do their jobs, but they know the writing is on the wall and that perhaps there is now not much they can do about it. What are you going to start telling your patients? I don't know. Um, I don't know that any of us know. Just by being brave enough to show his face and his name, his life is now literally in danger. Is the Senate going to uh, rush through a plan that gives him security for him and his family by unanimous consent? Of course not, because they don't care about what happens to peasants and normal people. They only care about themselves. It's a sick country that we live in.